today in Algebra 1, we learned how to do one-step equations using multiplication and division. And let me get that in view for you. There we go. One-step multiplication and division. We've already talked about earlier this week about using inverses. Remember, inverse just means opposite. And then if we have multiplying, the inverse would be to divide. And if we have dividing, the inverse would be to multiply. So remember that. Also, we talked about that our goal is to isolate the variable, and the golden rule is what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. Remember, the two sides are just on both sides of the equal sign. We have a couple of examples to look at, and that's really it for today. All the vocab is the same as it was when we did one step adding and subtracting. For example, number one, we have negative four equals k divided by negative five. Now, I'm going to ask some questions over and over again. The question you should be asking are the same ones I'm asking when you're working by yourself. For example, on this first one, what's the variable? It's k. So, what's happening to k? It's being divided by negative 5. What's the inverse of divided by negative 5? The inverse of divide is multiply. So, that's what I'm going to do. Multiply both sides by negative 5. These cancel. That's the beauty of an inverse. On this side, I have left k. On the other side, I have negative 4 times negative 5, which is positive 20. And that's my answer. It doesn't matter which side the variable's on and which side the answer's on. That's irrelevant. Equals means they're exactly the same. So either way would be correct. Also, lots of people mentioned today that it was easier for them to just think what divided by negative 5 equals negative 4. And I want you to be cautious if that's your method, because eventually when we get to two-step and multi-step equations, that's going to be much more complicated. You really need to learn the process of using inverses. The next thing we did was m divided by 3 equals 1.5. You'll notice the variable is m. It's being divided by 3, so the opposite is to multiply by 3 on both sides. Those cancel, and m equals 1.5 times 3, which is 4.5. That's our final answer. Example 3. If I have 7x equals 56. x is my variable that I want to isolate. What's happening to it is it's being multiplied by 7. The inverse of that would be to divide by 7. Those 7's cancel. And 56 divided by 7 is x equals 8. It's also important for you to see that you could put the answer back in and check it. For example, here, if I put back in 8, 7 times 8 does equal 56. If it doesn't check when you plug it back in, you probably got the wrong answer and need to try again. Our last example for today, number 4, is negative 12 equals 3 fourths x. This time we're multiplying x times a fraction 3 fourths. And instead of dividing by a fraction, the reason being that makes it really complicated because we'll have a fraction over a fraction, instead we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal just means flip the fraction. So the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 over 3. I'm going to do that to both sides. Remember when I multiply fractions, it's easier if they're both fractions, so I'm going to add a 1 under this negative 12. On the right side, the 3's cancel each other and the 4's cancel each other and all that I have left is x. On the left side, 3 and 12. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 12 four times. So I have 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16, over 1 times 1, which is 1, and anything over 1 is just itself. So my answer is x equals negative 16. Please take the time to finish A7, the homework assignment you started on this same concept earlier this week, and let me know if you have questions.